Yeah, so no, Russ was an impressive guy. I mean, he was a young attending, he'd won awards, and he was doing, he had his own lab and was doing uh, some great research in mitochondrial function uh, and its relation to Alzheimer's disease. And that influenced me because it, it's, uh, you know, it's a different way of looking at the disease. It, uh, it, you know, it's not the mainstream sort of simplistic uh, view of, of Alzheimer's disease. In the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease, this protein accumulates and it forms these clumps called plaques. And these protein clumps, these plaques, the protein that they mostly contain is a protein called beta amyloid. Now, what causes the beta amyloid to accumulate in the brains of Alzheimer's patients in the first place? That question has never really been addressed. One thing we do know now is that control of the production of beta amyloid is exquisitely regulated. And one of the things that regulates that is brain energy metabolism. The Alzheimer's therapeutic development field is kind of at a crossroads. They've developed a number of different treatments that are directed at trying to eliminate this beta amyloid protein from the brain. And a number of these treatments have now been tried on people with Alzheimer's disease. And they haven't worked, or at least haven't worked nearly as well as we need them to. And the, the question before the field now is, do you, do you say, well, this is still the best way to go, and it will work, we just need to do it a little differently. Maybe we need to study these same treatments in people decades before they actually have their Alzheimer's disease, and maybe it will work in that case. And it might. The other, the other possibility, though, is that maybe this is just not the, the way to go. In the mid-1980s, uh, studies were starting to come out which showed that in the brains of Alzheimer's patients, uh, their brains were not able to, to utilize sugar normally. And I was working in a laboratory that was trying to understand this phenomenon. And one thing I had the idea to do at that time was to see whether we can substitute another energy source for the sugar that couldn't be used properly. We took mitochondria from people with Alzheimer's disease and we took their mitochondria and we moved it into cell lines that we had in the laboratory that we had previously taken the mitochondria out of. And when we moved the mitochondria from the Alzheimer's patients into these cells and we studied their mitochondrial function, the mitochondrial function was impaired in a number of ways. So certain proteins weren't working right. Um, some of the some of the consequences of those proteins not working right, such as something we call oxidative stress, was increased. And the cells in general weren't happy. And um, so when we first reported this, it was, um, it was pretty big news. And over the years, you know, I've, I've tried to push that angle. And then when um, Jeff got to the University of Kansas and he started studying this really uh, on the human level. Some of our early data uh, suggests that, you know, if you're more fit, you have less brain atrophy in Alzheimer's disease. So people with Alzheimer's disease who are more fit have, have less brain atrophy or brain shrinkage. Uh, and so we think our data suggests that, that exercise uh, may actually slow the disease itself. And that, that's incredibly important because, you know, we as a society spend billions of dollars a year on drugs that don't do that, um, that actually help with some of the symptoms but don't modify the disease itself. Uh, so we may be sitting on something simple and inexpensive like exercise that actually can slow the disease process. So that's important from a public health perspective, but you know, from our perspective it's probably more important because it's a clue that exercise may be doing something to the brain um, uh, that influences the disease. So if we can understand that mechanism, what relates physical exercise with brain health, uh, what's, what goes between those two to actually drive better brain health or drives the slowing of Alzheimer's disease, we can capitalize on that. And that's Russ's job. And that's one of the reasons why we work so well together is he's doing all these exercise studies and he's saying, well, you know, 
you know, there's something going on here. We just need to understand what it is so that we can bottle it. You know, it was very obvious very quickly that Jeff was going to build a world-class program, either with or without me, so I thought I'd better be part of it. <laughs> Just looking at him, you know, you might not think this, but this is a guy who gets things done. You know, some people might take a look at, at Jeff and just think, oh, you know, big loping frat boy. But you know, he really is probably the most, um, the most productive, um, you know, effective scientist I know. So I actually came back to Kansas City to do that. Um, that was the goal. Now, I didn't know how realistic it was. And I thought it would be something that would take 10 to 15 years if we had a chance. Um, but we, we progressed really quickly and, and got on the national radar pretty, pretty fast. We, we got a couple uh, you know, invitations to things to participate in national studies that were important. So the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative is one of them. And then we became part of the Alzheimer's Disease Cooperative Study Group. Uh, and we performed well in those studies. So that got us sort of on the national radar. And then, you know, getting Russ here in 2007 was huge. Uh, so, you know, bringing the basic science and the metabolic approach and then having Russ uh, head up our efforts to get the Alzheimer's Disease Center was, was uh, essential to, to having the whole package, you know, and, and, and being competitive on a national level. So, you know, we're trying to do two things. We're trying to, to prove that exercise and cognitive activity can, can prevent Alzheimer's or treat Alzheimer's, slow it down. And the second thing is we're trying to understand why, why that might be. We want to be able to prevent Alzheimer's disease in those who don't have it. And then we want to be able to treat it in those who do. I started studying this in 1987, and since then it's been sort of pretty much a steady stream of, of disappointments and frustrations. <laughs> <laughs> you have to put your quarter on the table, and you have to say, look, this is what makes the most sense to me, and, and this is what, what I'm going to pursue, whether people ridicule it or ignore it. You know, I think this is right, and, and this is how I'm going to move forward, because we got to be right. <laughs> I mean, and people like Jeff Burns. <laughs>